You're listening to Castrol CarCast on Podcast One. Well, we get into uh, all sorts of stuff. I got some new uh, Toyota sports car talk and uh, also uh, whatever happened to Mitsubishi. And um, we'll give you some shots of uh, Sean and his fabrication for the BRE cards. It's absolutely mind-numbing how, how wonderful and beautiful this stuff is. And if if you see these pictures of, you know, hoppers and catch tanks and heat shields and stuff that this guy's fabricating out of just raw aluminum, if you don't get a boner, there's something wrong with you. If you don't, <laughs> yeah. if you don't, go, if you don't love it, I don't like you. <laughs> I'll put it to you that way. All right, first, let me hit uh, Tommy John. On for the next few weeks, uh, God forbid months, where I'll spend a lot of time at home. That means comfortable loungewear and underwear. God, the Tommy John loungewear is so good. Like, I've been wearing their long sleeve uh, shirt around. I'm wearing their, I'm wearing their undershirt and underwear right now. But their loungewear is unbeatable for a limited time. Customers get twenty percent off site wide plus free shipping softest most breathable proprietary fabrics perform like nothing you've ever worn before no roll waistbands no wedgie guarantee uh no visible panty lines for the ladies this stuff is top shelf and if you don't love your first pair they'll refund your money but you will not get a refund be prepared because you will love tommy john right uh matt yeah, just hurry to tommyjohn.com slash carcast for 20% off your first order. That's tommyjohn.com slash carcast for 20% off. tommyjohn.com slash carcast. Survivor Season 40 is here with 20 past champions returning for winners at war. Survivor fans know that this is the best Survivor season in years, and we're breaking it all down after each episode on Rob Has a Podcast. I'm two-time Survivor Rob Sisternino, host of Rob Has a Podcast, and we've got recaps, interviews with your favorite former players, and a community of Survivor fans from all around the world. So come check out Rob Has a Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, the Podcast One app, or wherever you get your podcasts. Yeah, get it on, got to get on, no choice, we got a mandate, get it on, and welcome to our social distancing car cast. I'm Adam Peral, it's Matt the Moderator, DeAndrea, over there. Where are you, Matt? Hello, I'm, I'm, a, I'm at home in Venice, but there's uh, they're building an apartment complex right outside, so I apologize, you're probably, everybody's going to hear a little bit of that. I'm trying to make it as quiet as possible, but it's a little, a little tough. You know, acoustics are so interesting <laughs> In that, I'm in my home theater, obviously. Um, so it's weird. They always say home theater. But I always say, I, if anyone says to me, what are you doing? I go, I'm going back to my house. And then I'm going to my home theater. It's never a house theater. Yeah. It never calls it a house theater. It's a home theater. It's now, not just a theater when you're at home? Well, <laughs> I think it just, I don't think anyone even here knows what to call it. They just go basement or downstairs. But anyway, it's it's acoustic. So the the ceiling, I'll let you, I'll let you see it. Well, it's hard to see. But the ceiling's all black. The wall. I can see it behind you. The wall over here is all, oh, sorry. This is all fabric and has all the jean stuff in it. So it's good acoustically. Now. And you're in front of the infamous tile that you had uh, listeners tweet you about. Right. All the directional change on the tile. Um, the thing that was interesting is many, many years ago, I used to do Howard Stern show from a Zephyr box. It was called, it was before all this zoom business. You had to buy a box. Uh, the box was the size of an attache case. It was just like really like size of like Samsonite briefcase from the seventies. The box was about $10,000 and it was mm -hmm. called the Zephyr. And you had to hook it up to an ISDN line or something. And I used to broadcast from my house to Howard Stern's show. Um, and I'd do it at three in the morning, our time. And I would come home at 1230 at night for my job. So it was tough. But the room I would broadcast from was my office. And my office was a hardwood floor, you know, plaster walls. And 
just a, a hard desk and a cabinet. There was no fabric or throw rug or anything in there. And what I would do is I would sit directly under the ceiling fan and I would take squeeze clamps from carpentry, but you could use like potato chip clips or something. And I'd make a circle of beach towels around me that would hang down. So I created this cone of silence and it was like, it was, I'd hang one off of each fan blade or attach one to the other fan blade, but it ended up making like, like it's like putting your head into a changing room or something. Yeah. I had this curtain of towels hanging around me. And one time, and then when I was done for the week or whatever it is, I'd take all the towels down because it was my office. And then uh, one time I woke up late, meaning like I went to bed at like one forty-five, and I woke up at like 2.55 or something. <laughs> slept for like an hour and eight minutes or something. And I, I woke up late and I, and I rushed in. I got the Zephyr all hooked up and I started talking. And Howard's like, are you in a trash can? What's going on? And I was like, all it was is I didn't hang up these two beach towels that went around my head. And that's yeah. as big a difference as it, as it makes. And I, people get into this thing where like they think they have to put, you know, acoustic material in the wall or whatever you just literally have to take a bedspread and like hang it hang it yeah. where the curtain rod is or hang it on the ceiling fan and it just deadens it i i, I picture you looking like daniel larusso in the karate kid when he had the mm. when he was the shower costume that was me <laughs> that's a that's a very apt analogy all right so uh things are closing all around us uh we just found out that the trans am race is off Super bummer. May 1st, 2nd, 3rd, whatever that is. Uh, yeah, super bummer. Um, I, I'm weirdly, opt I'm, I'm not optimistic. Uh, I believe the news is pessimistic. So I, we have this thing where it's like doom and gloom, doom and gloom, doom and gloom. And then somebody goes, oh, yeah, all right, turn, moving on. Like we freak out about everything and then we move on. I think we're going to move on sooner than we think but it's it still doesn't mean hey, look if shit's canceled it's canceled it's not not coming back we had yeah. a a b sedan <laughs> race or 2.5 trans am race at sonoma we're sonoma. looking to do and that got canceled uh long beach grand prix canceled um hopefully the trans am race will get rescheduled but you know it's going to come up it's going to be something up again. yeah it. see now that's the most likely to get rescheduled for a few months down the road because it is a smaller event and they're a little bit more nimble on being able to do that. Things like Long Beach Grand Prix, it's just done. Like now that's 2021 is Long Beach Grand Prix. And, and of course, you know, outside of our world in, in automotive Olympics, the Olympics are going to be just pushed a, a year. The, um, there is a show that, for the car folks during the uh, quarantining uh, that's on Netflix, which is like F1, the drive or something like that. It's like the dr driven F1, this whole F1 series. Uh, Max Paddock can look it up. Um, it's really interesting. It's all modern F1 stuff. You know, each episode is, I think it's about 40 minutes long or something like that. And uh, Formula One, Drive to Survive. Sorry, there you go. Uh, I think I watched it last year. It, it, it's pretty bingeable because the episodes are pretty short. And they just kind of highlight a team and a driver and what can go wrong and the trials and tribulations and like how crazy everything is and how high the stakes are. And it's pretty interesting stuff. Um, they've done like you know, the Red Bull team and, and McLaren and, and Ferrari. And it's like, it's the same story. It's like the, they got the veteran driver. He's the number one driver. And then the young buck comes in, he's 22 and he's tearing it up. And next thing you know, those guys are making contact with each other out on the track and mm -hmm. they cut back to the team and the team's like, no. And it's, uh, I think they had, uh, I, I think it was McLaren. Well, first off, the last one I saw was McLaren, and then they had Zach Brown, who's um, the guy who's running McLaren's race team, I guess. Or I don't know if he's 
something, but he's the head of motor, you know, McLaren Motorsports or whatever. And then I'm like, Zach Brown. Oh yeah, that's the guy who drives the 935 in my race yeah. every every year. And he drives this that big yellow and light blue swap shop or whatever sponsored uh 935 in my r- run group at uh Laguna Seca every year. So it's kind of cool for McLaren. I mean, you know, you you know you have a real racing enthusiast if you got guy out there driving a I think he's driving a 935 um, K3 or something. It's like, it may even be like a tube frame 935. It's just like a yeah. big old 935. <clears throat> and it's that one, you can kind of picture it. It's like yellow and blue. It's got kind of a Bahamas kind of look to it. And there's a big sticker. It's like a windshield sticker, but it's not, it's not the top. It's not the top part. It's like the whole it's like a two foot by 18 inch sticker that's just on the window on the driver on the passenger side. Like I seems almost illegal actually. <laughs> like you couldn't really see through it if you're going to the right. But uh, anyway, so I was watching a uh, drive to survive the F one thing on, on Netflix. And then I was like, Zach Brown. And I was like, and then, the fun part about the computer is like, oh, Zach Brown, wait a minute. And I just tapped up, tapped up. I was like, oh, yeah, that guy was in my race. He finished um, sixth, I think, last year. And then uh, it's like oh, footage from Monterey of Zach Brown driving, like a helmet cam. And I was like, oh, let's watch him go around in his 935. Um, it's a cool series that's really well shot, like amazingly shot. And the stories are compelling. And, uh, and also sort of insane, like the, I think it was an episode, it wasn't McLaren, it was, so there's like Red Bull, Red Bull Aston Martin or something, you know, Red Bull doesn't manufacture engines, but um, it's like the Ferrari team, the Red Bull team, Mercedes is the number one team, and of course, I don't think they're ever highlighted. I think yeah. it's like... Um, <clears throat> If if you watch uh, the NFL Hard Knocks training camp or something, it's never the New England Patriots. It's it's never a top tier team because why why wouldn't it be? You know what I mean? Like they don't grant them access, but it's but it's yeah. uh, it's always like the the teams that are just off the podium that are trying to trying to get there. Although they did do Ferrari, um, and maybe they'll do Mercedes. I haven't I haven't seen, it. but it's a really interesting series and i was watching last night and i'm trying to think if it was it wasn't mclaren but it was one of those race teams lesser known and they were like so excited that their guys were going to finish fourth and fifth and it was the first time they finished that high and blah 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 and the one guy came in for a pit and he did you know they do 1.7 second four tire changes like yeah Pow, yeah God. Right. But the one guy didn't get the lug nut on right or whatever. And they had to pull over. And uh oh wait a minute. See, I'm looking at a message for uh, Chris. Let's see. Force huh. Oh, should I hit this chat thing? Yeah, uh, so, so there's a there's an episode where they're talking about McLaren's CEO, Zach Brown, and a team named Force India. I don't know if that's the team you're thinking about it'll be it'll have different names and different sponsors but it was the episode before the zach brown episode and I'm, you'll try to think of the name of the team it's a team like you've heard renault? of yeah it was probably renault um it was probably renault and they hadn't done a ton of winning in a while and anyway they're real excited to finish fourth and fifth they had two cars in the race they're going to finish fourth and fourth and fifth and it would have been their best finish um the one guy comes in, they do the 1.7 second tire change and the lug gets cross threaded or something. The guy's got a wobbly front tire. He just has to pull over into the fucking grass and get out of the car. And then and everyone's like, shit, shit, this is brutal. Uh, and then the next guy comes in and they do the exact same thing. Get the bad <laughs> lug, bad tire. And he literally just has to pull over and get out of the car. Yeah. And they go from their best finish ever to both guys got a, like a cross-threaded lug Ugh. and the poor guy who's 
operating the impact gun is like devastated. And, and also I think he's the only guy who knows it because when the car's pulling off, he's the guy going, no, no, no. And everyone else going, go, go. He's yelling, no, no, no. And they're yelling, go, go, go. Cause they think everyone's got it. Yeah. And so while the car's taking off, there's a little period of time where there's one guy on the planet who knows he didn't get his lug on right, his center lock on right, and everyone else is just go, 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 including the driver. But that guy knows that in the next 30 seconds, everyone's going to turn and look at him and go, what happened? <laughs> but, he but for a split second, for a split second, everyone is like, this is exciting as he's pulling down the pitch yeah. and getting on or whatever. But he's going to know in a second. And then they did it consecutively. Does a guy like that just get the one shot? Is he like a kicker at the big game in football? Like you miss it, then you're you're done. I <laughs> don't. I he don't. Got the know. one job. Those those pits with the lugs. It always seems, and and we'd have to look into it. It always seems insanely dangerous to me even though it, it rarely is but whether it's nascar or whatever like when you're racing a car whether it has a center lock or or lug nuts that's the kind of thing you check 10 times before you actually hit the track you know it's like you check it you'd recheck it you check the torque on it blah 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 then may, maybe you'd go uh, practice or qualify or something and then you check them again like yeah. that's just the way it is and the fact that these guys are going as fast as they possibly can just boo, 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 go 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 like yeah and then the guy's just going to go out and he's going to get on the back straight at talladega and be going 214 miles an hour with this guy that's just super hurriedly like threw this tire back on yeah feels dangerous to me yeah it does I, plus the communication process of when the when the guy's hitting it, putting the lug on, how come he isn't the final say? Like, where's the communication between him and the dude in the front going, all right, you're good to go, just go. I, I, I think the problem is there's a guy in the front and he's like watching. And when all four guys pull off their tire, the guy sees all four pulled off yeah. and they go because they're trying to shave tents. And yeah. the problem is, the reality is, is all four guys should do a signal. Like when you sit on the exit row of a commercial airliner and they go, we need a verbal confirmation <laughs> yeah, that you can yeah. open this door. You don't get to just go, hey, man, or thumbs up. You got to go, I, I am capable of opening this door and then they point to the next guy and they go i am capable of opening this door so what i'm saying is is what they really should have is all four guys not just pull off but like physically thumbs up and once yeah. the guy sees all four or thumbs up he'd release them but that would add four tenths of a second yeah it and would. they don't want to do that well <laughs> maybe this flies in the face of everything I say, but maybe there should be a minimum amount of time for a pit stop. Maybe they should just go, you do a pit stop and it's three seconds. And if you get under three seconds, it's still three seconds. Like, Does it take away too much of the competition yes, factor of the pit, it right? It's a Because now thing. everyone's trying to get three flat. You know, and well, not they're not trying to get three flat. What you're basically saying is, is instead of going as fast as you possibly can and maybe missing a lug nut and 1.7, you have three. So take your time, you know, get the change all four tires in three seconds. Take a nap. Yeah. Read the newspaper. Yeah, it's, that's a bad definitely idea. not as exciting. No, not as exciting. Not as exciting. There must be a sensor or so. the driver knows it when the tires not not tight, obviously. Well, well, immediately the 
the guy putting it on tells somebody and then they radio him and go, no. I know. You, you, yeah, but that, all that guy does is have a look like, oh, shit, what happened? <laughs> like, that guy well, that's how not, you know. I guess that's how you know. <laughs> but no, but the driver's gone. I mean, the driver's gone and yeah. re-entered the chase, right? That guy who did the pit move, it's going to take him a minute to talk to someone. And, and, like, he, and also, he's unsure, kind of like, I don't know. I think I missed it. I don't know. Like, it's so fast, you know? So yeah. it's not that guy. It's the driver who feels it first. I'm, I'm sure somebody knows this. I don't watch enough NASCAR, but uh, in, in racing where it's five lugs, not just the center lock, what's the penalty for not getting one of the lugs on? And, you know, does he get to do a lap and then come back in and they do the lug? I don't really know the actual procedure of of he drops one and it rolls away and he's scrambling, but the guy's gone. And who wouldn't, but, and who would know it was gone? Yeah, who would I, know? I, I don't know. Is there, because we've been to a few of those races. There's not like, there's like an inspector in everybody's pit. The guy's like, do you have any lugs in your pocket? Because right. I want to make sure they're all on there. And it's like, no, I guess, I don't know. You just admit to it. There must be an F1. There must be a sensor. There's so many crazy sensors everywhere. There must yeah. be a sensor if a tire is not snugged up. I'm seeing uh, mechanics have a button on the wheel gun that signals to the pit light system that the mechanic is finished. A raised hand is the backup to this electronic method. It's a button on the gun. Yeah. That lets them know they're finished. So you you pop it on and then you hit the button. Yeah, or maybe there's a sensor within the gun. I don't know, but it uh, it, it alerts the pit light system. If that gun is anything like the giant gun that we got from uh, Harbor Freight, yeah, never, it's never going to work because you could never <laughs> let go of the two buttons at the same time. I think we flipped the button over. Yeah, he took it apart and took and uh, moved the gun around. That thing was crazy. So uh, I, I, I've seen a lot of bad ergonomics in my life. <laughs> I've never seen a gun designed that poorly or anything, a TV remote designed that poorly or a coffee maker. Um, yeah. Max Zapata and Matt, um, Sean was is making some really cool stuff out of aluminum for the BRE car. And I think we should put it out there and share it with people. Cause that guy is weaving some magic over at the shop. So BRE as, as previously discussed has a lot of really cool bespoke pieces under the hood, yeah. mostly like reservoirs and catch cans and things like that. Um, stuff that is way nicer than it needs to be but i in a weird way maybe that was kind of a trademark of of bre maybe their stuff was nicer than it than it needed to be does that seem about right it it does and then i also uh when i was going through some of the photos they they sized up some things i think specifically when you start looking at placement of an item size of an item weight of an item and uh, on that 510, it has the dual headlights on each side. And I believe on the passenger side, they, they have a small box, like an aluminum fabricated box sized perfectly to fit behind it. And that was one of the items where I, obviously you're just not doing something off the shelf for that. And uh, right, as, we're, yeah. as we're right now, we're flicking through some of the images. And uh, when you get to the one with, with the dual headlights, you can kind of see how it needed to be fitted behind there. Yeah. Some of these catch cans look like they're just overkill, but they did such a nice job doing them. Um, mm-hmm. And, uh, and Sean recreating them uh, with metal break and a lot of welding and the lathe here. Here's this, this is uh, this photo we're looking at now. This is fabricated to, to fit behind the headlights and you can see it has rounded edges, but then in the square box, and uh, we can post all these photos up on our social media and up at uh, carcastshow.com to see them. But pretty, it's, pretty it's uh, really incredible impressive. stuff. I'm yeah. always so impressed with uh, with aluminum fabrication. Me too. There's a whole 
community of uh, they call it welding porn, and guys just share yeah. pictures <laughs> of just really nice welding and and uh, and craftsmanship. And this this should go up there. I think people would dig it. Uh, you know, I I don't think what people like fully understand is this stuff was all just sheets of aluminum when Sean yeah. began. You know, I think people tend to think like, well, it's was kind of in that shape when he bought it, right? Like, no, everything's just a plate, a strap, a stick, a yeah. billet, uh, an ingot. You know what I mean? Like when he's making the top of that catch can, he didn't buy something that was sort of that shape. He bought an ingot of aluminum and laid it down to yeah. that shape. The yeah, catch it, can itself. He had a flat plate of aluminum, and he bent it. It's pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty amazing shit. And the um, it, it's 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 time consuming. It's obviously expensive. It's it's weird that Sean is so good at it that it doesn't take as long as you would think when you when you saw it. Like it, yeah, it seems like it'd take forever. Not only is he doing all the catch cans and everything, but some of the stuff you guys can see are like there's a heat plate, like everything uh, BRE was sort of interesting. Like they have in the back of the 510, I think they have a fuel pressure. Sorry. In the back of the roadster, they have like a fuel pressure gauge on the outside, like face mounted on the trunk. It's, it's flush mounted, but it, you, you read it from the outside. I think it's a, I think it's yeah. a fuel pressure so it's like you can see if the you can see if the pumps are working from behind the car without getting into it you know what i mean um they had a switch that uh cut off the alternator so that you wouldn't have the pull the electrical electro mag magnet pull on it so for the last lap you could flip flip it off they've all little little doohickeys and in in things that are interesting so it's like the the heat shield underneath the carb carbs uh, and over the header has like these quick releases on it. So you can pull them, pull it up, like pull the pins out and pull it off yeah. and get to whatever the header. Um, everyone else would just have a heat shield that was just like screwed in like, like everyone else would use. But for some reason there's, there's a quick release, which means Sean can't just go online and buy a heat shield and screw it on in between the manifold, the exhaust manifold and the intake manifold. He has to fabricate this whole quick release system, which again, it's like expensive and time consuming, but it's why a BRE is a BRE. Yeah. And when you see it done, you, you, you really appreciate it. Not just what he's fabricated now, but you really start to appreciate what they did back in the day. And you're right. When you look at all this stuff, you're like, why didn't they just buy a Moroso can or whatever? And then to your point earlier, you know, the guys making the BRE cars back in the day, they were, they were so good at it as well that it probably didn't take them quite as much time. I mean, certainly much easier to just fire up the jegs.com and just get the cans that you need. But <clears throat> Uh, but I bet in house these guys were were pretty quick about doing some things. Well, also th they got nine dollars an hour. Yeah, so it's like who cares? <laughs> it didn't take that. These are white guys getting nine bucks an hour for doing like fabric, big time fabrication. Um, yeah. So Sean, and you can go to our website and look at that stuff because it it really is beautiful, beautiful work. Also, uh, uh, Sean welded our bingo hopper and strengthened it to survive all of our airport trips for the uh, unprepared shows. <laughs> wow. That is uh that's wonderful. <laughs> and you can go to our uh, YouTube page and look at the, what is it? YouTube slash Adam Carolla. YouTube.com slash Adam Carolla for your stand up and podcast clips. And then we also have a car cast YouTube, youtube.com slash car cast show. All right, let me hit the uh, Tommy John here. That's what I wanted to say. Tommy John, oh, for the next uh, few weeks or few months, you're going to spend a lot of time at home, and that means comfortable loungewear. That's right. Under Underwear and loungewear with Tommy John. For a limited time, all customers get 20% off site-wide, plus free shipping, softest, most, most breathable, 
proprietary fabrics perform like nothing you've ever worn. They have a uh, no roll waistband. I'm wearing my Tommy John's now. I'm wearing my T-shirt and my underwear. I usually wear my lounge wear shirt as well. So the lounge wear stuff is so comfortable. It's all good. They got the no wedgie guarantee, no visible panty lines for women. If you don't love your first pair, you get a full refund. The best pair you'll ever wear. It's free guarantee, but you're never going to turn these things in because they're just so good. Right, Matt? Yeah. Hurry to TommyJohn.com slash CarCast for 20% off your first order. That's TommyJohn.com slash CarCast for 20% off. TommyJohn.com slash CarCast. So I'm maybe uh, just wearing the Tommy John's right now. Hmm? I'm wearing just the Tommy John's right now because you can't see below. Oh, the just. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what else? What's new in the automotive world? You know, we've got the new um, Toyota Supra that uh, that I drove. And mm-hmm. uh, and soon after that, after I drove it, they announced that it's going to get a bump in horsepower. It's going to get about a 47 almost 50 horsepower bump in horsepower, but uh, sort of the junior model of this, the, the, the Toyota 86, which was also the Subaru BRZ. You drove it a, year, a few years ago, and, and in the Toyota Long Beach Grand Prix, you, it's one of the cars you raced, I think, in the last race was the uh, 86. I, I, think I, I think I raced it in the last two. Well, I was driving it in the pro division for sure. Yeah. So the uh, the Toyota 86, uh, similar to the Toyota Super, is going to get a bump in horsepower. Currently, when you drove it, it was the uh, it was the the boxer engine, 205 horsepower boxer four cylinder, and uh, now it's going to be uh, turbocharged. So, which is good. So it's going to be 255 horsepower. It's going to get a 50 horsepower bump, and the addition of a turbo hopefully means a little bit stronger engine internally, and maybe you can even uh, start to hot rod it and turn it up the wick a little bit. But a 50 power, 50 horsepower bump is kind of what that thing needed from the beginning. It was pretty gutless. Um, I think we drove one around the street. Of course, I drove one uh, for many laps at the Long Beach Grand Prix, and I'm I'm here to tell you it was pretty gutless. Um, They, you know, they probably gave it a cone air filter and, yeah, cut off a I muffler. Know, I don't know what they did. A little cat back exhaust or something. Maybe got an extra 11 horsepower or something. But it was still pretty gutless. Although, you know, super fun time because everyone else is driving the same gutless car. And, you know, at the end of Shoreline, you, you were up in fifth gear and you were pretty well. I don't know. Max and Pat, I'd have to check the tape. And maybe not for today's show. But... Um, the, the, you probably were in fifth gear and you're probably at 6,500 RPM or something before you got to the end, maybe 5,500 or something. I mean, you're red line in fourth, you're going into fifth, you're in fifth for a little bit before it was time to break pretty hard and turn in at the end of shoreline. And so you're probably going one thirty five or four or some three or something like that you'd probably up yeah. over 125 135 in that car it was like moving along it, it seems like you're moving along when people like max P- pappas are like bumping you from behind and you're going like 130 <laughs> miles an hour yeah then it seems Dang, like you're going real you're fast right. it seems like you're going fast i i don't know that they would have done this just for the cost but it would have been interesting to see the pro celebrity race happen now with toyota supras which is interesting because that car's a lot more money, so I don't think they would do it. They were always pretty right. tight on a budget. But the additional horsepower, the great handling, and the Supras are all automatic. Mm. You know, so I wonder if, if that increases the competitive nature of it or, or, or not. Certainly the better handling cars and the more power could be more interesting. But yeah. Uh, you know, but but that's for a handful of drivers. For for a lot of the drivers, for seventy percent of the drivers that participate in the, those races, the extra horsepower isn't necessarily a good thing. Yeah, no, when it wouldn't be because you'd be doing one sixty at the end of that straight, and uh, there'd be bedlam down there. Yeah, uh, the the BRZ with two fifty five 
is going to be nice. Yeah. Um, the and and you're right. If they built up the bottom end, which I'm sure they did, and it is a um, and it and it is a turbo car. The good the thing that I like about factory turbo cars is they usually build up the bottom end so that the bottom end can handle 400 horsepower when they come in at 255. And you're usually just uh, a chip or what are they called? What do they do now with the chips? They don't call it a chip anymore. Re- yeah, flash. it's like a tuner. Yeah, flash. like a, like a, they call a flash, flash or a handheld tuner. And yes. You're right, just a little bit of programming stuff. I, you know, without – it's a small engine to begin with. That 255 should be able to be 300 horsepower with, you know, four or $500 of just tuning and, and, and that's it. Just a couple aftermarket stuff you can mail order. And I'm sure right. you'll get the 300 all day long. Uh, agreed. And then that car, which is a little light, nimble, sort of good looking, yeah, fun little, little pocket racer kind of car. Um, that kind of car with 300 horsepower would be a really fun yeah. car at a, at, a, at, a, at a budget to go out and have some fun in. The problem with it is th- that car at 205 horsepower just didn't cross the Mason-Dixon line into fun. It yeah. looked cool. It handled well. Uh, the Subaru WRX always had turbos, right? Yeah. Because those cars always worked. And they use, they must use a twin turbo with the flat horizontally opposed engine right yeah yeah that's a good question i don't know i didn't get to spend much time with one of those but uh but they were up in the 300 plus range the you know the stis and the evo too uh when you know when the evo was the big competitor is mitsubishi making cars in the united states or for the united states now yeah i I think i think they still uh is the evo (laughs) i don't think they're doing an evo I don't think they're doing an Evo. No, they're done with that. Oh, Mitsubishi cars in the United States. It's a good question. When's the last time you saw a Gallant? <laughs> Not, or uh, uh, what was, was the Gallant the one that they drove in Cannonball Run 2? No, that was an Eclipse or uh, something like no, no, that. No, no, a Starion. A Starion. Yeah, yeah. The Gallant was like a sedan. Hey, Mexipat, for this show and, and others, uh, your chat screen, we're all trying to work out this technology. Is that... Do we need, is that locked off? Or are we allowed to sort of comb through that? You could, what do you mean comb through it? Well, you, you have stuff like do do the Tommy John spot on there. I, I did the yeah. Tom, why Oh, yeah, we, I can't remove it. So you, it just, you can't. It just, it's just, yeah, there. just always just look at the bot. Yeah, the closer to the bottom one. Yeah. You can't remove stuff from the top. Uh, okay, it just cycles up if you just add it on there. All right. So, yeah, so I'll yeah. always just look at the bottom. Right. I should get a piece of paper or something, put it over yeah. the, the top. I do that with gauges in my car. That's weird, right? You can't monkey with it. No, it's good. It's it's a way like like if you it's an email chain or text message chat. Like it just mm. yeah. Once it's out there, it's, it's out a live there. text box. Yeah, you guys know. See, my problem is is uh, when it comes to technology, I'm I marvel at all of it. So then. When you can't do something, I also marvel at it. I'm like, oh, why wouldn't we be able to do this? I, we could do everything else. But it's sort of that way with the – it's like the Google search. Like, there's so much shit you can find. And then I'm like, oh, find a yearbook picture of Lance Armstrong. It's like, not up there. And I'm like, why not? <laughs> like, of course it's up there. Like, no, nah, can't find it. So I uh, I marvel in a good way and I marvel in a bad way. Yeah. Um, so, hey, By the way, Mitsubishi does have cars. Well, yeah, yeah. they have two little cars and a couple of SUVs. They have an Outlander SUV, and then they have a Mirage car. Hmm. Is Mitsubishi <laughs> I, Mitsubishi was always kind of interesting to me. Um, I, I, I in in a way, I like the Mitsubishi uh, more than I like the Subaru. In the e, I look. I, I kind of like the Evo a little bit better in the looks department, mm, yeah. but I don't think it performed quite as well as yeah. the Subaru did. And Mitsubishi used to have like uh, something that kind of looked like the cro- a cross between a Ford Explorer and a 
Zuzu I'm uh, sorry, Zuzu Trooper or something like that. But and that what was that? They had a big box kind of SUV kind of thing. Yeah, I forgot that, the name of that thing. That thing was that thing was okay too. And I like this story on not the first generation, but the second gen when they got like box flares and 16 inch aluminum rims and stuff like that. But I guess, I don't know. They just never really took off or, and, and I, maybe I, they're I, huge in uh, Hungary or something like that. I yeah. Don't. And I, I think they just sort of shifted strategies here to go with, with uh, sort of entry level vehicles. The base Mirage that's available now is, uh, just under 14 grand you know really th- it's 13,995 for a base i didn't think you'd get you know like you didn't know you could buy a new car for under- i don't know if you could buy that like i don't know i didn't think you could get a car that much when you compare about like what's 14 grand oh, these days you know chris is uh it, it, offering at the bottom of the screen montero <laughs> montero yeah, montero was their four-door suv kind of thing it was like the Montero was a step up from my Zuzu Trooper. That's for damn sure. Yeah, we're looking at some old pictures of uh, the Montero. Yeah, it was kind of like the Zuzu Trooper. It probably was built on the same like platform as the Trooper, but it, it got a little nicer. It was kind of up there with the Toyota for whatever thing that was for runner. For- yeah, the Land Cruiser, that, that 90 Montero had a little bit of Land Cruiser look to it i just don't see the montero popping up at gooding at amelia island hmm. <laughs> not anytime soon i'm trying to think of what all this has done to all the auctions are all online now right they're just yeah they're doing they're doing uh uh just like internet bidding i guess phone bidding and you know what's interesting when we were looking if you drill down on the aux the uh auction options they'll have like you know, well, 10% if you're in the room and registered or just in the room, you know, 13% over the phone yeah, on the computer or whatever. They, they jacked you a little for not being in the room. Yeah. They cannot carry that across now. I don't think right? so. It, it has now. <clears throat> so for all the people who were planning on bidding online anyway or bidding on the phone anyway, this is a little bit of a mitzvah for them. It's a break because now they go from 12 or 13% down to 10% because they can't carry that across the board. Yeah. But also from the seller side, you think about is now a good time to sell and are some of the auction companies providing some incentives like, Hey, we're, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to do uh, uh, listing fees or something along the lines of that to try to get more cars in there. Um, mm-hmm. You know, but a- every business is scrambling for something. But I'm curious what's going on or what's going to happen for the next, I don't know, four or five, six months for upcoming auctions. Well, it can't be good, <laughs> but um, I do feel like, uh, God forbid, uh, they they muss around with anything at Pebble Beach. I feel like Pebble Beach is far enough away. And I think while everyone is wringing their hands in doom and gloom, I'm starting to realize that this thing's going to go away and not be the devastating uh, killer that everyone in the news is making it out to be and all the wives are making it out to be. So I do Do you anticipate a trickle effect? Like let's say Monterey Rolex historics at the track, mid end August is everybody walking around with a 3M mask on or, or it's just done. No, here's my sad realization on uh, society. Um, we, we are kind of an all in or all out society. That's the way we work. That's why people, every person I've ever known who's smoked goes i'm quitting on new year's eve you know and i go well how many cigarettes you smoke now i go smoke a pack a day i go okay what is that 20 cigarettes yeah no i want you to smoke 15 tomorrow no no i'm waiting (laughs) waiting (laughs) yeah well okay but you want to quit right yeah but why not just could you get by on 15 cigarettes a day yeah all right well let's start that tomorrow no no i'm going to wait and wait until the first 
Like, yeah. okay, that's how everyone works. We're all in or we're all out. So it's like, we're all in. There's kids on the, in the cages at the border. This is the worst thing ever. And then there's no mention of any kids at the border. <laughs> and then it's all Russia, Russia, Russia. And then there's no mention. And then it goes to Ukraine. And then there's, there's whatever. We're all in and we're all out. I am telling you, we went all in. We pot committed on Corona. And as soon as all these celebrities are cured and out and about and walking around and filming the next film or whatever, when we go out, we're going to go out. Yeah. That'll be it. It's not going to be, well, uh, a year from now, half the people are still wearing masks. No, no. It'll just go right back out. We're dumb. And we're dumb and we're <laughs> reactionary. First yeah. Off, I, now, here's the thing. I was never in. So it's going to be easy for me to transition because I was never in. So I don't have to do anything. Yeah. But everyone else is going to have to transition. The transition takes four days. It doesn't take six months. Right. Because okay. we're dumb and we should have never been as far in in the first place. See, the reason it's easy, the reason we get out fast is because we never had a reason to be in that deep in the first place. Yeah. That, that's okay. what I got gotcha. you. To get out. By the way, if there's ever a real, you know, I mean, if people's skin is falling off them, you know, if, if what, if you just woke up and like Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson are dead, they just Oof. died in Australia, you, we would have a reason. Yeah. We'll see that Idris Elba and everyone else just, they'll just pass right, they'll just cycle right through it, just go right through it. That'll be it. It's always yeah. been that way. All right. I've always known it's easy for me. <laughs> now you say it must be nice being me oh no i have to live with lunatics <laughs> who, who are social distancing so yeah. um you know the, speaking of idris uh hobbs versus shaw is now making the rounds on cable oh yeah so. yeah i've got it on my playlist too yeah i'm ready for that one again i was i, I was watching i was it's watching on it's on hbo i was watching fast five Hey, Max Bada, just as I look at our screen with our technology, are you allowed to scroll up and dot, dot, dot it? Like, check it? You allowed you... to scroll it up and just put checks? Uh, no. Wow. Can't, I, yeah. can't, I can't alter the stuff I've already typed. No. Are you allowed to scroll up and put checks? Or, or you don't, don't know, know what I'm talking about. I don't know what you mean. Okay. Well, what is my goal? Uh, you have Geico spot. Right. But what is my goal? Is to cross off stuff oh, yeah. that's already happened. Yeah. Matt, you're a genius. I understand. I understand <laughs> right. the goal. All right. That's my goal. So can we do that? Uh, maybe if I, I could put like two X's next to and I'll type it again, like XX. Are you allowed spot, to scroll? If you put stuff at the bottom, everything moves up, right? Right. Matt, you want to say, Matt, you tell Chris oh, what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. You, 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 you can't. You can't put stuff underneath. Doesn't everything move up as you put new stuff underneath? So you just want me to like flood it out so everything else disappears from your chat window? Well, if you put X's or something, would it all scroll? Do you not know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I get what you're saying, yeah. Uh, yeah okay, there, well, that's, no, that's what's happening, like right? That. Well, yeah. What, okay. What, well, this, it, it's achieved our, perp, our goals, right? I mean, if we got, we got rid of all the stuff at the top we wanted to get rid of, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah, on the shape of your window. For me, I just see a bunch of X's and everything else. But I see if it's working for you because your window Everybody's is Everybody's window and font size is different as well. So it Oh, be- okay. Well, so what you just did, for those of you who are listening at home who want to Zoom, <laughs> um, we had a bunch of stuff at the top, like do this, run down that, talk about Toyota, blah, blah, blah. And then I got to all of it, but it's still there. So And we can't change it. But okay, so yeah, let's see that. I will the bottom and scroll it up. Okay, so after you've done it, I will I will cl- try to clear it out. Yeah, well, if just... you if you put an X underneath it, it goes up and off the board. Okay, all right, there yeah, you go. We all can right. do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let me hit uh, Geico. Do you own? Do you rent? Do you have homeowners insurance? Do you have renters insurance? I bet you do. Geico makes it easy to bundle your homeowners and renters insurance along with your auto policy and good thing because you have so much to do around the house these days uh, you can save some time save some money and uh save some heartache at geico.com get a quote see just how much you could be saving and how fast you could be saving it at geico.com 
All right, Matt, let's see. You can go to chassis, C-H-A-S-S-Y dot com and uh, get all the Blu-rays and uh, movies and uh, all that you need for us. Um, Uppity and all that stuff is there and the Shelby American and all that. I was going to say to you, I was watching. um, (laughs) I was watching uh, Fast Five and it's a great scene where they pull the GT40 off the train. Yeah pull it off and they pull it onto the flatbed and they go jumping off the trestle bridge into the river and blah, blah, blah. And I was just watching it. It was like midnight the other night. And uh, I'll always shoot an email to Chris Morgan, like, Hey, I'm watching, you know, whatever. And I thought, I, I want to send him an email that says watching the train scene. It's awesome. Is that a real GT four? <laughs> yeah. I, I wanted to say that. Yeah. But then I realized he's a sincere enough guy to go, no, that was a kit car. Yeah. 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 But he should know. I know it's a kit car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but does he know? I know, or is he just going to answer? I would probably answer that way if I were him. Yeah. I don't, I don't think he's going to get, I don't think he's going to get the joke. He's too nice of a guy, actually, to to right, you know, and not that much of like the car guy well, to to if really you think about. Yeah, but if you think about me, the source, you got to know that's an insane <laughs> question, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah, uh, uh, Matt. I gotta go yes. watch that again. Uh, you can go to amcroll dot com and get caught up on whatever we're doing. Uh, what do you got, Matt, the moderator? Well, since we're all in isolation, I'm just taking some uh, some uh, project car project photos, putting them up on my uh, social media, and uh, and I'm scrolling through and I'm going through old stuff that we've done, some of the racing events and Porsche pictures and and Newman cars, and I'm just kind of posting them up there for fun, just saying we you know can't can't wait to get back out to like Monterey or something. So if you guys want to follow some of those cool photos from back in the day, check so- out uh, my social media. Until next time, Adam Crawford, for Matt, the moderator, DeAndrea, saying keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wheel. For the latest updates and call-in times, follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at CarCast Show. If you'd like to write in, fill out the form on CarCastShow.com. And don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes. CarCast is a Corolla Digital production and is produced by Chris Loxamana. For more information, visit CarCastShow.com. Do you own, do you rent? Well, you probably own or rent. Sure you do, if you're listening to this. How about you bundle those policies with your auto policy? Geico makes it easy to bundle your homeowners and renters insurance along with your auto policies. Good thing. And uh, saves a bunch of time, saves a bunch of money. So just go to geico.com, get a quote, see just how much you could be saving. Geico makes it easy to bundle. That's geico, geico geico.com. Wilson, you sent the game-winning email at the buzzer, avoiding a 4.55 meeting on everyone's calendar. How did you do it? I got a huge assist from Grammarly, an AI writing partner that helped me make my point. And it works everywhere I write. Summarizing a doc only took one click. When everyone uses Grammarly, everything just makes sense. Go to Grammarly.com slash podcast to download it for free. That's Grammarly.com slash podcast. Easier said, done.